Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Monday Night Wars. I'm Brett Mix from Macho Wrestling 101. Please hit like and subscribe if you like the history of wrestling videos I do. I also stick up to date with Raw, SmackDown, and PLE events. We're doing the Monday Night Wars here, and we're at week 11 for Nitro, November the 20th, 1995. This is the go-home show to World War III from the Mason Coliseum in Mason, Georgia. The 12th ever episode of Nitro, and the 11th week they go at it for the wards. So it's week 11 of the Monday Night Wars. Won't make you wait for the ratings. This Nitro drew a 2.5. The WWF Raw, what did it draw on this week? 2.3. So a big win here, especially since the Raw the night after Survivor Series. So with this show's rating, including Nitro, uh, on this 11th week, that means that we have an all-time record of four wins for Nitro, five for the WWF, and two draws. The winning Nitro of this week that drew a 2.5 was commentated by Steve McMichael, Eric Bischoff, and Bobby Heenan. Those three have been there since the beginning. Nitro begins with Bischoff saying, We got a barn burner tonight, and do they ever. Hulk Hogan and Sting, one-on-one. -on -one. It's not Hollywood Hogan and the Crow Sting. It's Surfer Sting versus Hulk Hogan, but at least it's Sting and Hogan on Nitro on free cable. First, they start out with Scott Norton against the Shark. The Shark was just an awful gimmick. Scott Norton dominated in the entrance aisle, then back in the ring, and the bell goes. Shark with a bear hug. They have some, some of the most talented wrestlers in the world, and this is what we get. We get the Shark and Scott Norton. Scott Norton pins him at 144 after a power slam. I gave it a quarter of a star. Mean Gene then talks with Sullivan and Jimmy Hart. Stinger, you can't beat Hogan tonight, says Jimmy Hart. Sullivan says Hogan was stupid enough to hand the championship over to Jimmy Hart. Back when the Giant was the champion before he got stripped of the title. Macho Man wants the world title. Bring Bischoff brings up a good point about that. Hogan doesn't really have a friend when it comes to World War III when the title's on the line and everybody is going for it. The Disco Inferno comes to the stage to dance even though he's not wrestling. And Bischoff saying he just wants to get in some TV time. Next up, it was scheduled to be Eddie Guerrero versus Ric Flair, but Flair comes out in street clothes, and Pillman's with him. Eddie Guerrero gets it on with Flying Brian instead. Pillman, a part of the Horseman and the Hart Foundation in his career. Imagine if Pillman was in the NWO. He would have been built for that stable. Flying Brian will get a chance to take on Eddie in this match. Flair says on the microphone, because they're all horsemen. Woo! Eddie Guerrero starts out shoving Pillman's head out of the way. He slaps back. Pillman throws Eddie to the corner with a head scissor takeover, and Pillman caught him with a side suplex. Eddie to the top turnbuckle, drop kicked by Pillman, and a two. Eddie runs to the corner, and Pillman sends Eddie to the turnbuckle head first before an Irish whip. Eddie rolls him over and gets a two count. Pillman catches a chop and a hard right, and another chop by Eddie Guerrero. Eddie down and Pillman with some slow shots to Eddie who's standing and then hit a standing vertical suplex. Eddie Guerrero down and Pillman uh, with some more chops, a crushing blow. Pillman with a side headlock and Eddie Guerrero was power slammed off the ropes after leapfrogs and jump overs. Eddie Guerrero was measured by Pillman who spits right in his face. Eddie Guerrero tackles him down after that and the two have a brawl. Now Eddie Guerrero off the top with a crossbody to the outside. Eddie was successful in what Pillman missed doing because Pillman missed the crossbody and hit the guardrail just before this. Um, a nice suplex out of full Nelson by Eddie, and he goes to the top for the frog splash, and he pins him at 627. So Eddie Guerrero with the frog splash over Flying Brian. I give the match two stars and three quarters. It was a good match. They show Savage beating Mang last week and until the Dungeon of Doom arrived. Savage's left arm is the story now, and how will that arm be seen against uh, the Dungeon of Doom in the World War III? How will Savage wrestle with one arm is the question. Royal Warrior Hawk took on Big Bubba next. Big Bubba was formerly known as Big Bubba Rogers or the Boss or the Big Boss Man before this. They've shortened his name to just Big Bubba. Big Bubba was slammed to the... Uh, he faces Royal Warrior Hawk. Uh, he's slammed to the canvas by Hawk. Hawk missed a crossbody, and Bubba hit shoulder to his back. Hawk fights his way out of pain momentarily, but then a belly-to-belly -belly suplex by Bubba. A big right hand to Big Bubba. Hawk goes upstairs, missed the clothesline, and Bubba went to roll up his fist with tape, and he got tripped up by Duggan on the outside. So Hawk wins as Duggan held Bubba down to the mat. Hawk wins at 38 from help with Jim Duggan. I gave it three quarters of a star. Next up, we got the main event of Nitro and is the match portion. It's Hulk Hogan. Dressed in black with the Macho Man versus Sting. 
Uh, Sting comes to the ring first dressed in red and yellow, red and yellow paint. Unlike the green and black last week, he's in red and yellow, Hulk Hogan's colors. Meanwhile, Hogan's in black, and he and Macho Man comes out in black first to welcome Hogan at the stage. And Savage points towards the stage for Hogan to come out, but Hogan sneaks up behind Sting dressed in black, so he's foreshadowing his heel turn even months ahead of time. Uh, and he jumps Sting, and he well, actually he taps on Sting's shoulders, and then Sting backs up as he sees that it's Hogan. Hogan and Sting lock up, and the fans are cheering for Sting. Some boos for Hogan, even though mostly it's split 50-50 pretty much. Uh, I, I noticed the boos just a little bit when he was hulking up later in the match. But first, Hogan chops Sting in the corner and lays him out with a big right. He missed a clothesline, then ate a drop kick from a Stinger. Stinger slammed him, and then Hogan, Hogan suplexes Sting outside on the floor, a thin mat on top of concrete. He slammed him on it. Hogan pinned by Sting after he fights back some more, pinned against the canvas, I should say. He'd not pinned it as a win. Both guys tie up, go behind Hammerlock by Hogan, and a drop toe hold, some good, nice chain wrestling by Hulk Hogan. Uh, lead on... Uh, lean on him, brother, says Savage from the outside. Hogan spins with an armbar and holds it on Sting, and then another armbar by Sting. Sting reverses the arm work with an arm ringer of his own, uh, countered into a full nothing by Hulk Hogan, and then a side suplex was attempted, but Sting lands on his feet, and the Stinger gives Hogan a side headlock. So they go down. where He's wearing him down to the mat. Hogan kicks Sting, squeezing all the life out of him momentarily, but just a two-count. Hogan with a nice suplex to Sting. Sting working on Hogan's leg. And now the Scorpion Deathlock as Hogan pushes out of it and breaks out up, hulking up. Hogan says no as he keeps shaking his head as he hulks up. Sting punches Hogan, but it has no effects. And some of the crowd boo here. Hogan then says you to Sting after taking the shots, delivering the rights, and a big boot. Now he only needs the leg drop, but he misses Sting. He drops the leg on the canvas instead. At 9.31, Sting then noticed Hogan... Uh, Sting then noticed Hogan's hurt, well, his leg was hurt, so a scorpion deathlock. Then Hogan is trying to power out. The Dungeon of Doom attack him while the scorpion deathlock drop lock death deathlock. So, sorry, I can speak. The scorpion deathlock was slapped on Hogan at 9:31 when the Dungeon of Doom attacked both men, making this a no contest. The ring bell rings about 300 times as the uh, the Dungeon of Doom attack Hogan. Savage, Sting, Giant grabs Hogan and Sting, but Savage hits him with a chair. He then grabs Macho Man and choke slams him. Hogan and Sting pick up a chair simultaneously and then both run over the Giant, taking him over the top rope to the outside. Maybe a preview of what's to come at World War III. Uh, I give this match two stars and a quarter between Hogan and Sting on Nitro here. Uh, Macho Man was injured with the injured arm, but they all want to have a shot at the title. They come back and Sullivan and Jimmy Hart are talking about how Hogan deserves a beating and this is the go-home show to World War III so they preview it with a big brawl to end the show. Bischoff says he doesn't know who is going to go against two and creates doubt and says that Hulk Hogan doesn't have any friends at World War III. So that's TV ratings for Nitro is a 2.5. They clearly won the night because of Hogan and Sting to Raw's 2.3. So after two straight Raw wins for two straight weeks, quality-wise, I give this show a 6 out of 10. Uh, the record for Nitro is four wins, five losses, and two draws through 11 weeks. So not bad. Nitro is picking up momentum. Thanks to anybody who's enjoying these. I, again, put them in the Raw archive and Nitro archive on my channel for whenever you want to relive the Monday Night Wars. You don't have to do it at the same time as me. And you can just enjoy the videos while you relive the wars whenever you want on Peacock, or wherever you get the WWE Network, WWE, WWE Network, uh, anyways, that's it for this show, uh, Nitro, again, um, quality rating wise, I'd give it about a 6 out of 10, um, I, I, I bounced back and forth between 7.5, 7, and then 6, and I'm going to land on 6 out of 10. Since that's the last thing I do, I thought I'd talk about that before the 10-minute mark because I always keep these reviews under 10 minutes uh, for the Monday Night Wars anyway. Um, so that's that. We'll see you on the next Nitro. This was Week 11. Nitro won 2.5 to 2.3 over the WWF, and it gets a 6 out of 10 quality rating-wise. We'll see you on the next one. I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.